uncles where uh, children are raised up by damn dogs and wolves. Oh. Children being raised up as, with, from bats in a cave. Children being raised up uh, by monkeys in the wilderness. They're natural brute beasts, right? Keep going. Made to be taken and, and destroyed. destroyed. Make it and to be taken and destroyed. This is really talking about Edom because they're the vessel for destruction. When you deal with Edomites, they dwell in Mount Seir. They lived in caves and, 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 uh, and they ate berries and herbs. They ate bugs too. They walked on all fours. Okay. They didn't even walk upright. They didn't even bathe. They were cavemen. Howled at the moon. Right, keep going. Speak evil of the things they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. See, when you don't got the law, you get oh. destroyed in your own corruption. Uh, Jeremiah lets you know that. Jeremiah says, look, your own error will correct you. Your own wickedness, man. So if you don't have the law, you're a natural group of beasts. Even our own competition. Go kill the competition. That's how simple it is in these streets, man. That's why you call that's why when you hear uh brothers, Jake will let you know, man. Jake will straight up say, I'm a savage. Uh, I'm a sa he he telling you I'm that natural group beast. I'm a beast. Let you know, man, when you don't have the law, even our own people, even our own people will let you know. I'm a beast. <laughs> They'll straight up let you know. They let you know, look, I'm, I'm a savage, I'm a beast. It's the same thing in Genesis. Another thing, when you go into the apocrypha, the Most High doesn't always refer to men or as people or humans he'll refer to them as creatures uh, like who loves my creature more than me he'll say that right because he created men right that's it on that uh give me give me job 38 and 2 and you give me first first kings 2 and 1 first kings 2 and 1 you give me job 38 and 2. Right now we're going to start pulling some scriptures to show you that for you to be a man, you got to keep the law of God straight up. For you to be a man, a civilized man, a man of the Lord, you got to keep the law. Otherwise, you, you're just a savage or a natural brute beast. Right, you got what I want up? Go ahead, bring that up. Joe, chapter 38, verse 2. Who is this? That darkened counsel by words without knowledge. You see that? If you don't, what is the knowledge? We all know the knowledge, the wisdom, and the power is the word, the law, statutes, and the commandments. You don't got that, you're what? You're lost. Right, keep going. Verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man. What? Like a man. What? Like a man. That means... Leave, leave all that damn foolishness alone, man. Uh, Leaning on your own understanding, you gotta follow the laws of God to be a what? Like a man. To be a man. Nothing else. Uh, bring out that First Kings for me, y'all. Uh, two, uh, two and one. First Kings chapter two and verse one. Now the days of David drew nigh, but she got and he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, uh -huh. "I go the way of all the earth." Now, Solomon was David's son, born of Bathsheba, right? So Solomon was told by his father David, look, it's a time that I'ma pass and I'ma die. So this is what I'ma tell you, keep going. Be thou strong therefore, and shew thyself a man. He said, be strong and show yourself a man. So he's gonna show him how he can be strong and show himself a man. Read the next verse. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. No, no, no. Have sex with as many women as you can. And keep, keep the, the charge, charge of the Lord thy God. No, for you to be a man, you gotta go out here, get a gas, son, and own the block. And keep, keep the, the charge, charge of the, the Lord, Lord thy God. God. 
For you to be a man, you got to follow God. Keep going. To walk in all his ways. To keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses. That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. And whithersoever thou turnest thyself. That's how you be a man. You follow the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Otherwise, you still that natural brute beast. You still a damn murderer. You still a savage. That's why the most I don't teach uh, treat you like a man. He treats you like a beast. You kill, you be killed. Because that's the only way you understand. A man knows the error of his way. A man knows when he done something wrong. Someone that's a human, somebody that's civilized. But somebody, a savage, or a natural brute beast, they don't understand that. They only, they only understand power. That's why a lot of our people... No, it's not on. It, it is? Well, I'm not teaching for that. I'm teaching for them. <laughs> I mean, it ain't on. You want to turn it on? You want to turn it on? You know, Daniel said it's off anyway, so it's good. So, for you to be a man, you got to keep the love. Other than that, yeah, like I was getting into, for our people, that are savages and natural group beasts. The only thing they understand is power. That's why they, they fear the white man. They fear police. They don't fear a uh, regular Jake. They don't fear their own brother. They fear power. They fear men, fear men that got the power to kill them. Uh, they fear uh, people who get killed. They fear men that can make them go missing. They fear <laughs> men that can take their money. <laughs> That's who they fear. They don't fear the Lord. Right? So that's it on that. Go back to Genesis, right? Go uh go to uh chapter two. Right, we're gonna show uh how you have life too. Is that it on that? No, it's a little bit more. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Let's start back in three. Uh this is Job chapter 38, verse 3. Chapter 38. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. And answer thou me. He's gonna demand son of you, man. And, and what what does he demand? We already know in Deuteronomy, man. He said, I demand so I require son from you. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. It's so, it, like the Bible is just it, it repeats everything over and over and over again. Because the most high, we're like his children. What do you, what do you how do you treat the children? You repeat the same thing over. Even though they don't like ah. I'm tired of hearing that. You ah, just said this over and over again, but you got to repeat it because they'll forget, right? So that's good. Yeah, go back to Genesis uh, chapter 2, and you, you start at 3. So now we're going to show you that for you to be even living or considered a living being, you got to keep the law of statutes and commandments, right? Otherwise, you're dead. You're dead to the most high, right? Bring that out, huh? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rest which God created and made. Right? So the most high, he rested. When it says he rested, don't be simple. When you go into the Hebrew, it says he stopped, he ceased. You know, Ishmael like to be like, my God, my God doesn't rest. Allah doesn't rest. You got your mind, man. The most high just stopped. Keep going. <laughs> These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. And so the, these are generations of men. Just like the days of Noah, the generations we can't know, the generations that's not written, these are men as well. So I don't know where they got that uh, Adam and Eve was the only two people, right? Keep going. In the day that the Lord, Jehovah, made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord Yahweh had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So there wasn't men to till the ground. So there wasn't a great rain on the earth back then. You had water, and you had water in the ocean, and you had lakes, but no one knew what rain was until it rained all over the earth on, uh, when Noah had came, right? When he prophesied. So there was really no men that had the knowledge to till the earth. You got to be civilized to till the earth. How to deal, uh, deal with agriculture. You got to be smart and civilized. If you're a caveman, 
and you pick up a stick, you're not going to develop the stick into an axe. They didn't even, uh, when you deal with Esau, what is that uh, that movie that deals with, um, it deals with the cave, man. I think it's like The Journey of Fire or something like that. Mm, I don't know. Well, it's a, it's a movie, uh, I think, with Mel Gibson in it. I got to look. But... Castaway? Oh, no, no. No, no, you, uh, you'll look it up, right? So look, they're a bunch of cavemen, and they have a journey. They're going on a journey to uh, get fire again because they were living in a cave, and they had fire, but they never knew how to make it. So what they did was they just kept throwing, they kept throwing sticks on it, but one day the fire went out. So they went on a huge journey to find out how to use fire. These are the natural real beasts, man. They made a whole movie about how cavemen went on a journey just to learn how to use fire. And you're going to think these men, you think the Lord going to give men like that the power and the understanding to till the ground and deal with agriculture? That's why it was called the Garden of Eden. It was the first garden. It was the first time people were tilling and, um, you know, they have, what? Got a question up? Hey, you got a question or answer. So it's the first time people actually start dealing with agriculture. That's why it was special. Everybody just walking around in the forest grabbing berries. Don't know how the berries was made. They don't know to take the plant up and, 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 and put it in a spot and till the ground so they could grow more berries. They just grabbed the berries and ate them. Right? So keep going on that. That's why the Garden of Eden was special. It was the only garden on earth during uh, that time. Keep going. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord Yahweh formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, when you water the ground, when you deal with irriga uh, irrigation or agriculture, you got to water the ground first, then till the land because the plants need water. So he's letting you know, he was giving them the knowledge, the farm, right, keep going. And man became a living soul. We became a living soul because the Lord gave us our commandment and we kept it, right, keep going. And the Lord, Yahweh planted a garden eastward in Eden. You see that? With the men, they created a garden eastward in Eden, right, keep going. And there he put the man whom he had born. See the man who he had born. So he didn't, uh, did he even talk about Adam yet? Uh, what verse are you at? Verse 9. Verse 9? Did you skip 7? Go back to 7. Verse 7. And the Lord, Yahweh, formed man of the dust of the ground. See, I, I missed that. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So that's the breath of life. Now we got to go over to what the breath of life is, right? Give me, uh, give me Baruch 4 and 1. Uh, so the breath of life is straight up the commandments of the Lord. So before, like they got a commandment, the commandment was go forth, till the land, pray the garden of Eden. Anything the Lord commands you is a commandment. All right, bring that out, huh? And you give me a, you give me a look 15 and 24. All right, bring that out, huh? This is Baruch, chapter four, verse one. This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh. It's straight up the books of the commandments of the Lord. Keep going. And the law that endures forever. forever. The law endures forever. Keep going. All, All they the that keep it shall so, come to life. When you keep the commandments of the Lord, you're, you're considered a living being. Man. That's right. You come to life, right? And what? But such as and leave it. But such as leave it. Leave it. Shall shall die. Die. You're dead if you don't leave it. And Luke 14 lets you know what that uh, 15 and 24 lets you know what that means. Luke chapter 15. It's not good. It's not good huh? So when you do with Luke 15, it's a parable about a father and his two sons. One son listened to his father and kept the commandments and never transgressed them. And the other son, he went astray and he went off. And we're going to see how, what he talked about and how he uh, described his son that didn't listen. All right, bring that out. All right. Luke chapter 15 and verse 24. For this, my son was dead. He said what? For, For this, this my, my son, son was dead. 
and is alive again. He's alive again, but I thought the only person that died and came back was Christ. It's a parable. He's saying he went off and stopped listening to his father and didn't keep the commandments, therefore he's dead. You have a question? Illuminati is just a, a what you call like a, a like a, 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 a oligarchy, right? When you deal with an oligarchy, it's like a clique, a cube. A clique is just part of a specific people in a group. Now, the Illuminati got everything from the Hebrews. Bring it out. Just what they're trying to do is. You know, they deal with the left hand side. They don't deal with God. They deal with demonic stuff and Satan. So they're the opposite of us. You know how you got um, yin and yang? Yeah, white and black. And then they got white and black and black and white. Yeah, because it has like, they have the, the little good things they have. It's the, the things that they inspire from, right? So when you deal with them and they're the, uh, they're the left hand side and the dark side, what they're trying to follow or portray as is the good. They're trying to seem like they're good. They're doing right. good things. But right now they're actually destroying the world. Right. Because the original people that's supposed to rule the earth uh, were, were enslaved. They're enslaved and they're not doing what they're supposed to do. You know, the Israelites, the blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans who were supposed to rule the earth, they're not doing their original job. They're not doing their uh, What's your nationality, sir? I'm African American. African American. Okay. African American. So then you're an Israelite. So you supposed to be. See yourself on that sign earth. right there. Wow. They're coming back. You let the Illuminati take your original spot. You worried about them, and you're right. supposed to be in rulership. You see yourself on that sign. I don't worry about my own. Uh, Daniel nine and twenty two. Uh, we got the preacher, Book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 25. I have heard what the prophets say, and the prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have a dream. I have a dream. So as you can see, there's a lot of brothers sitting here told that, uh, that Martin Luther King was basically an alpha or getting Greek, teaching our people certain things to sit here and love our, our oppressors. And, and that's why exactly why a lot of people are lost in this situation. So they sit here and have accepted to be, oh, we're not supposed to, they think that we're supposed to be around them, these white folks, we're not supposed to be around them. We're picking up bad habits from them, right? So, verse uh, 26, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophecy lies? Ye that prophets of the deceit of their own heart. That's why the Christian church is falling down. People are sitting there realizing you go to Christian church, you're over here twerking, doing all types of things, things of, you know what I'm saying? Got some brothers and sisters drinking, doing all types of things. Most I know your heart. Most I know your heart, brother. You on your way now? People start coming back to nah, Allah. I came here now. Come, come, come. 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 Come, you already, you already in motion, bro. Welcome home. Welcome home. These are reasons why we need to come back to our heritage. There's, there's, there's aspects of us being taught to be like these, and, and, and yeah, and we pretty much just glorify these white folks, and they're glorifying us. And that's what we gotta have some self-respect. Stop working for them. Stop, stop. Own your own business. Sell with the brothers and sisters. Work and coordinate with the brothers and sisters. Get a sisterhood, get a brotherhood. That's what we're trying to build out here. Just build our brotherhood and build our sisterhood with everybody. You know what I'm saying? My bad. No, you know, the brother's right because when you deal with the more, like, when you deal with scriptural appropriation, there's a verse in the Bible that says there's nothing new under the sun, right? So when you deal with the Egyptians, what did the Greeks try to do in the Romans? The Romans and the Greeks love following the Egyptians. Alexander uh, actually took a lot of Egyptian culture, right? Because the Hebrews helped build the pyramids in Egypt. They tried to learn how they were built, but we built them. Just like the, the natives and the Mayans that were here. They built pyramids as well, because they were over there. Hella, hella got them. 
But when you deal with culture appropriation, they look up to us. Like Caucasians, we taught them everything they know. Right. The original Europeans were black. When right. you think of the Moors and the Moorish Empire, during the Dark Ages, they ruled because there was a man named oh, Septimius Severus that destroyed the Roman uh, Empire. He was a black man. He became the fir uh, one of the first Roman uh, kings or Roman generals. And he took over rulership over Rome. How did they flood? Did they have like a war? They had a war. A war of rulership because Caesar had died. So Caesar was the head general and then the black general of the Egyptos band, which name is Septimius Severus, he came up with all the Egyptians and took over uh they took over Rome and it started the Dark Ages. And then the Moors came and they developed and they took over Europe. But what the Moors did was they taught whites how to bathe. They taught whites how to bathe. They taught whites how to read and white. Right? They taught whites how to walk as well. They didn't know how to walk. They was walking on fours. They're in caves. But bring um give me that Job. This is the book of Job. Chapter 9 and 24. The earth is given into the, the hand, hand of the, the wicked. wicked. So the wicked, like I said, the left hand side or the dark side, the Illuminati, because we didn't do what we're supposed to. Now you got wickedness in the world. You got, I think, like 75,000 black women going missing because sex slavery is actually a business in America. A real thing. No. There was, I think, like during the Super Bowl, it was like 33 accounts of people buying uh, sex trafficking. Oh, yeah. These people, they get money through wicked means. They don't get money earnestly. How did they get America? They didn't even get America earnestly. Yeah. They stole it. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They stole it. And the reason why they're in America is because when you look at the French account, Look up uh, Illuminati was banned from France. The Illuminati created the French, Re uh, French Revolution and they got banned out of there. So what they did was they ran over here to America. So these people, now they're ruling the earth and they're some of the most wicked people. Right, keep going. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. When you're a judge, a judge is like a righteous man. When you're a judge, you create law and order. The earth is out of law and order. And it says they cover the faces of the judges. One of, a great judge is Christ. Come.